So welcome to a review exercise here that we do to practice taking a set of data. This is kind of like if you had a set of 20 tests that a group took and these are the test scores and we want to see sort of how the group did, where the average is or what the average of all the tests is. So we start by making what's called a stem and leaf plot and all the purpose of a stem and leaf plot is is to take these numbers out of this list and put them in order. The stems are the tens digit, so that's 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And so we'll take those and then we will use them to sort this list. So I'm looking for the smallest number on the list, which is an 18 right there. I'm going to take that 18, it goes in the tens digits, the 1, and all I write down is the 8 for the ones digit in the leaf column. And then the next smallest number in the list is 48. There. And so the 4 and then the 8 goes there in the leaf column. And then the next number is a 53 right there. So I'm putting dots by them so I know I've already checked them and put them in here. And after the 53 comes a 50, any more 50s? 59. And then after 59, the 60s, looks like there is the smallest 60 is a 68. There's one, two, three 68s. So 68 appears more than once, so we list it all three times. So we're not going to just list a number once. If it appears more than once, we're going to list it as many times as it shows up in the list. And then 75 is next. And then there's a 76 there. And 77. And we have to consider all the 70s, now into the 80s. And there was an 81 right there, 81. And then an 83. And then 85. This is, I'm just trying to get this list in order. And you'll see why I need it in order here in a moment when we finish. 85 and then 87 and then 89 looks like I only have odd 80s in this case and then into the 90s there is a 91 and then a 92 there and then a 94 94, and 95, right there, and then one more, I think, a 98, and I'm done. So now what I actually have is the numbers in order, so 18, 48, 53, 59, 68, 68, 68, 75, 76. And so you can see I can use a stem and leaf plot as a way of ordering them, which helps because the next thing I want to do is find the median, which is the middle number in the set. So down here it's asking me to find the median, the mean, and the mode. Those are the three measures of center that we most often use to describe a set of data. So the median is the middle number, and I know there's 20 numbers in the set, so to find the middle, I'm going to count 10 off of each end. So 10 off the top, 10 off the bottom, that will get me to the middle of the data set. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 77 is the tenth number from the bottom. From the top, there's 98, 95, so I make sure I'm counting the right way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 numbers in from the bottom is 81. So my median is halfway between 77 and 81. So if I just think about the other numbers that I skipped, 77, 78, 79, 
80, so the middle between 77 and 81 is the number 79. So 79 is the median or middle number or middle value if you were to take this data set and find the center of it. 79 would be the number that you would use. Now there's no 79 in the data set, but what we're really looking for is where would the middle number be if we had all the numbers in the set, and it would be at 79. So that's the middle value. The next measure of center mean is one you might be familiar with where you simply add up all these numbers and you divide by how many there are. So I'm actually going to use a calculator to do that for me. So I'm just take these numbers, 75 plus 68 plus 98 plus 83 plus 91 plus 18 plus 95 plus 77 plus 92 plus 81. So the challenge here is making sure I get all the numbers and I hit the right buttons every time. Plus 68 plus 59 plus 87 plus 89 plus 68 plus 48 plus 53 plus 94 plus 85 plus 76. So those are my 20 numbers. And I just added them all together. Total of 1505. I'm going to divide by 20, which is the number of numbers in the data set. And that gives me a mean, which is what we usually think of as average when we take them all and divide by how many there are, of 75.25. So now I know the mean is 75.25 for that data set. Now the next question is what's the mode? And mode is the number that appears most often in the data set. And so if you look here, you can look for the one that has the most numbers repeated in the leaf, which in this case is the 3 eighths, which means that the mode is 68. It appears three times. And so now I have those three measures of center, median, mean, and mode, 79, 75.25, and 68. And there's some variation between the, two, the three of them because they're looking at different parts. The median is the very middle. The mean can be affected by big or small numbers in the data set. And you can see in this data set, there's some definitely larger numbers in the set, but there's also this 118 at the very bottom, which is pulling the mean down compared to the median. The median's higher because it's the middle, but the mean is lower because of this 18 that's kind of pulling the average. Sometimes we say we get a low score, it pulls the average down, we get a high score, it pulls the average up. And so that takes care of putting the list in order, making a stem and leaf plot, and then finding the median, the mean, and the mode. The median being the middle, the mean being when we add them up and divide by how many there are, sort of we think of as average, and the mode being the most common. Now we're not done yet because we want to use this data that we've collected so far to make a five number summary. Now we have part of that five number summary already because we have the minimum, the smallest number, which is 18. We don't have the lower quartile yet, but we'll find that in a moment. We have the median, which is the middle number, 79. We don't have the upper quartile yet, but we do have the maximum, which is 98. So we have three of the five numbers already. Now to find the lower quartile, remember I said that 77 was the top half, or the top of the, the bottom half of the data set and 81 is the bottom of the top half. So 81 and 77 tell you where middle is. So now what we want to do is find the middle of the bottom. 
and the middle of the top. So there's 10 numbers in the bottom half. So if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In other words, if we do the same thing we did starting at the middle, right here is the middle of the data set. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in from the, the bottom half, middle of the bottom half. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in from the bottom of that half means right there between those two numbers, between 68 and 68 is the lower quartile, which since it's the same number, I don't have to go between, I can just choose the 68 as the lower quartile. So that's the middle of the bottom half. And now I want to find the middle of the top half by doing the same thing, counting in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So those 5 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you can see that 89 and 91 89 is the top of the upper half, the middle of the half, and the bottom of the middle of the upper half is 91, so halfway between there is 90. And so my upper quartile, so halfway between the top and the bottom is 90. So now I have my five number summary, and I can use that to find what's called the IQR, or interquartile range. It's the distance or difference between the 68 and the 90, the quartiles, that's, that's the IQR, interquartile range. So 90 minus 68, I believe, is 22. And so that's the IQR. And then we multiply that times 1 and a half. So 22 times 1 and a half is 33. And then we use that to determine if there are any outliers. And we take that 33 and add it to 90. So 90 plus 33 is 123. So anything above 123 would be an outlier. We subtract that 33 from 68. So 68 minus 33. So 68 minus 33 give us 35. So anything below 35 in our data set, anything below that number is an outlier. And so the one number in our data set that's below 35 is the 18. And we said before that that 18 was going to, going to affect the mean, and one of the reasons it affects the mean is because it's an outlier. So anything below 35 is an outlier, anything above 123 is an outlier, and we have one number, the 18, which is below 35, and so that number is an outlier. So that means our minimum is 18, but we're going to actually use the number 48, because that's really the lowest number that's not an outlier to show up on our data. So on my box and whisker plot, which is the next piece I'm going to do, now I'm going to take these five numbers. The minimum 18 is an outlier, so I'm going to put an asterisk right there where 18 is. And the, the first number I'm going to mark is the 48 right here. Like that. So that becomes where I mark the minimum because it's not an outlier. And then 68 is the next number I'm going to mark on here. Right about there. That's the lower quartile. 79 is the median, 90 is the upper quartile, and 98 is the maximum. Mark that. And remember with the box and whisker, you take the three in the center, the lower quartile, the median, and the upper quartile, and make a box with those. That's the middle 50% of the data. Attach it to the maximum and minimum with a whisker. And there you have a box and whisker plot for the data for test one. Now I'm going to move down to the histogram. And the histogram is going to be actually pretty easy to make because we already put the data in order in our stem and leaf plot. And these histograms now have intervals of 20. So I'm going to go from 0 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 60, so on.
So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five intervals. We normally would want to have more than that, but for this exercise, we're going to go ahead and have just five intervals. If I go up to my data set, and I want to find all the ones from 0 to 20, they're right here. There's just one of them right here. This one. So if we go 0 to less than 20, there's our stems. We really literally could go like this. 0 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 60, 60 to 80, and then 80 to 100, basically. And so these are our intervals of 20. So there's one in that interval, none there, three here, one, two, three, four, five, six in this interval, and lots in this interval, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then an interval. So I'm going to take these numbers. Really, this is my histogram. If I were to turn it on its side, it kind of gives me an idea what the histogram should look like. So, but now I'm going to transfer them down to the bottom. So. Remember in that first interval, from 0 to 20, there was only one number. In the next interval, there were none. In the 40 to 60 interval, we had the 48, 53, and the 59, so there were three in that interval. So 1, 2, 3. Remember, in a histogram, we're not actually recording the numbers. We're just counting how many are in that interval. In the 60 to 80 interval, there were six numbers. And in the last interval, in the 80 to 100 interval, there were 10 numbers. So we're going to go all the way up to 10. And there's my histogram for test one. Now you're going to want to repeat this process for test two, the same idea. Break the data into a stem and leaf plot and you can take the data and make your histogram and, and box and whisker plot using the same process. Now in this version of the video I did all of this work with primarily without using a graphing calculator. If you want to learn how to do this with a graphing calculator, there's another lesson that will go through how to do the same process, especially with the box and whisker plot, and using that to make the graphs and all of that for using a graphing calculator. So you might try that lesson if you'd like to learn how to do this with a graphing calculator instead.